Thank you, Jenny. So, I would like to invite Peter Bollimore, our teacher, to talk about development of the Greek Hearing Voices Network. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to talk initially about um, how we made links with uh, the people in Greece. I think um, one thing that was missing uh, from last night was uh, that we didn't talk about the commitment of uh, a very special lady in Greece, and that's Mariana Cafalano. So I think. Without Mariana, none of this would have happened. Uh, it actually all started in 2008, not actually 2009, because uh, we were doing a, an Asylum Associates three-day conference in Manchester, and Mariana came over with uh, Fokian. Uh, I initially thought they'd just come to attend the conference. Little did I know that they'd come to see me personally to see about helping make changes within, within Greece. Unfortunately, I never got to speak to them. When they actually called me, I was on my way back to Sheffield, so the meeting never happened. But Mariana is a very powerful, committed lady, and she attended another Asylum Associates conference in, at Canterbury Cathedral in 2009. And again, at that point, we'd never uh, actually sat down and spoken. And she said to me, my partner, I need to speak to Peter, but I think he's going to be too busy. And Linda said, no, I'll make sure that he finds time to speak to you. And so I sat talking to Mariana and her brother had got a diagnosis of schizophrenia. She was concerned about uh, a fire that had taken place in a hospital and two people had been tied to the beds and they died. And she was very concerned about this practice and she said, can you help us in some shape or form? So I just said, yes. Not I had got a clue what I was going to do. So Linda, Tori, Kate and myself, we turned up in Athens in April of 2009. And I remember Mariana meeting us at the airport and we got a bus into Athens and I suddenly thought, what are we going to do? We're in a strange country, we don't even speak the language. Uh, Mariana then said, people in Greece I find are very kind, very friendly, very hospitable. She actually moved out of her home for us to stay there while we were here. The interesting thing, she says, it's about a 25 minute walk, which was fine. But I didn't realise how high this hill was. We were walking for 25 minutes. But what, I, what Mariana had done, she'd arranged a, a public meeting for one evening. And 40 people came to this public meeting. A lot of them were family and friends. Some of them were people with lived experience. There was a psychologist. But there was also two psychiatrists there. One was Lakouros and one was Fortis. And we sat talking to Lakouros and Fortis and Mariana and Foki and afterwards... And they were interested in the ideas we've been talking about. Then Lakouros says, would you like to visit a hostel to meet some of the guys that are in there? So we went to this hostel and I remember talking to one guy who was quite angry. And he actually said to me, well, your ideas are rubbish. They do not work. I said, well, if they do not work, why am I sat here talking to you? Because they've actually worked for me. Uh, then Lakouros did something that really went uh, against all... Uh, protocol, I guess. He got us into a hospital in Athens to meet with the, with the patients. And we sat for three hours talking to them. It was a fascinating three hours. They were really interested, really enthusiastic. At the end of the three hours, they started, they, they, they demanded that they wanted a hearing voices group. So it really sowed the seeds for something that happened. It was interesting. Uh, we then went to visit the anti stigma group, who were quite out there and quite liberated. And uh, I always remember afterwards we went to the Hilton Hotel for drinks and we overlooked the Acropolis, it's a beautiful site. And uh, there was a, a psychiatrist there called Demetrius. So I'm chatting away to Demetrius, trying to turn him into a convert of our way of thinking. Uh, and I could see Fokian with Tori and Kate having a really in-depth discussion somewhere else. So I thought, this is going well, we're really converting people. Little did I know that Fokian was teaching Tori and Kate how to swear in Greek. <laughs> So we went back to England and we thought, you know, we've, we've got the foundations of something we can try and build if we collaborate with people in Greece. So we returned six weeks later and we went and we took part in a debate. It was quite an open debate, a lot of people from different disciplines and families there. 
And then what I found really fascinating was there was a big football match in the street and the foot, one of the teams were people that were homeless. And then we actually, we marched, we did a demonstration. I'd never been on a demonstration before, but we marched on Parliament. And what I really found about the Greek people was the passion, the passion and determination for change. So I got really inspired by the people here and I thought we've really got to follow this journey through, it's very important. We came back again and Mariana had uh, arranged a workshop and this room only, only held 30 people but we got about 60, 70 people wanting to come along. And there was there a guy there called Theodore Mechadomalus that spoke last night and um, up to lunchtime we'd be doing a presentation on hearing voices and Theodore had sat there looking very stern. And at lunchtime I was stood outside and he followed me out and he kind of beckoned me over like this. And I thought, I braced myself and I thought, well, here we go. <laughs> and at first I thought it was going to be very critical, but he was very honest. And he actually came up to me and he said, um, I like what you've been saying. He said, I have been a psychiatrist for many years and I have ruined many lives with haraparadol. Now that is a very, very honest statement for a psychiatrist to make. He said, I retire in a few years. I want to leave a legacy. Will you help me build that legacy? So what I would say to Theodore today, I don't know if he's here. Um, if we look around here today, Theodore, because I see Theodore as, as being a very good friend of mine. There are three, 300 people here today from around the world. So I'd say to you, my friend, you now have your foundations for your legacy. Again, we returned yet another time. This time, Jackie Dillon came with us and Brian Langshaw was a, a worker from, from Liverpool. And over six days, we delivered training to over 300 delegates. So to me, although in all forms of mental health, the wheels jam, but at times they start to move. They may move slowly, but at least they are starting to move. That was the important thing. And I always remember it was very interesting uh, we would say we'd start work at 12 o'clock. And I didn't realise, I now know what Greek time is, we never started until 2. Uh, and because of the translation, sometimes we didn't finish while midnight. And I always remember uh, one evening, we, Brian and myself, we'd not had lunch or anything. And we said, right, we'll go and eat. And the Kouros and Theodore said, you can't. We've somewhere else to go. But it's midnight. Yes, but we've got some anarchists and they've taken over an old theatre. So we need to go there and do a presentation. So about 1.30, we're still in this theatre doing a presentation to anarchists. But to me, again, it was all inspiring to, just to see the passion that people and the commitment that they're trying to make. Um, one of the great things I think that Theodore did as well, um, I was walking past uh, the hospital in Daphne, and there was a sign on the ward outside. It was written in Greek. I didn't know what it said. So I asked the Kouros what it said. And it said, no physical restraints allowed on this ward. And as far as I'm aware, somebody may correct me on this, that is the first time in Greek history that that's happened. So again, it's a phenomenal change. They may be small, but it's a change that makes impact upon services. It's very, very important. So from there, from Greece, it was going to be like a, a musical tour. We finished up in Thessalonica. It, we were invited by Eugenie. So we met Virginia and other members of the observatory. And again, the passion for overwhelming. Again, Eugenie took us into her home. We were made to feel very, very welcome. And we did two days training to students and professionals, but we also did a training session to people that heard voices. And it was interesting, I always remember this meeting that we had with people that hear voices. We were there for about two hours. And it was really, really interesting. And I said to uh, Eugenie at the end, do you realise you've just had your first hearing voices group in Thessalonica? Because that's what we talked about was people's experiences. So, in just under five years, we have the World Congress here. I think that's absolutely amazing. I think it's also a real testimony to the strength of the Greek people. But I'd just like to conclude with something that Marius Rom said last night. He said, you need three things. You need resilience, you need growth, and you need emancipation. What I would say is, and we've looked at the times of austerity as well. The Greek people have shown resilience. 
The movement here is starting to grow. Let's support them to emancipation. Thank you.